Hello friends, Bairam here from Team Robomate Plus. It's an undisputed fact that technology has become an intrinsic part of our lives. Moreover, our children are growing up in a world of gadgets, softwares, apps, you name it, they claim it. A famously and oft quoted line is, technology is shaping the future of education, not just in India, but around the world. It's in the backdrop of this scenario that we are faced with a never-ending conundrum. Is technology in education a boon or a bane? And who better to answer this dilemma than our honored guest for the day? Yes, friends, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Mrs. Revati Srinivasan, a leading passionate educationist heading one of India's most premium educational institutions, Srimati Sulochana Devi Singhania School in Thane. The school's innovative practices have been recognized by the IIM Ahmedabad and the University of Alborg, Denmark. Talking about her, a management graduate holding specialized degrees in education management, early child development and MPhil. She has delivered keynote speeches at various Indian forums, education conclaves, and international universities like the Quality Council of India, University of Alborg, Denmark, Education Council of Scotland, Institutional Building, World Educational Summits on Pedagogical Innovations, Skill Development, Blended Learning, Leadership, Redefining Education, the list is endless. She conducts training programs for schools on leadership skills for teachers, study and life skill programs for students and teachers in India and abroad. Not only that, she writes regularly on education in national newspapers and has contributed to books on education and parenting. Mrs. Revati Srinivasan, our guest today, strongly believes education is beyond qualifications. It is about wings to fly high, yet roots to keep grounded. So, welcome, ma'am. Thank you very welcome. much and thank you for a wonderful introduction. Ma'am, I still feel it's too less an introduction for a personality like yours, you are more than worthy for it. Thank you. Ma'am, how do you feel technology would align to the modern day classroom? In a world that we're living right now, or that we are in, I think children are taking more to technology. And I think it's so important that we are, should also think in terms of aligning with children and their understanding. And if that has to happen, our classrooms have to be changed. So classrooms no longer can be within four walls. And it is not one, two, maybe 10 or 20 or 40. It has to be one to even few lakhs. So how do you reach out to everyone? You have to use technology to reach out. So all that we are seeing around, whether it's school education or higher education, it's about being able to reach out. So for me, technology is there because it's going to educate the masses. Wow. So, ma'am, according to you, what you mean is clearly it's not about just a classroom. It's the global classroom Absolutely. that you're looking at. Yes. Terrific. I can't believe that we could get a better answer. Let's take the next question. Ma'am, will technology help students think and learn deeply or is it just a fad? What do you think? I think it really helps children to learn very deeper. If you have to think in terms of deeper learning, technology helps. For some, they, it's also depending upon uh, the quality of learners that they are, or the kind of learners that they are. Some of them could be visual learners, some of them could be uh, maybe uh, acoustic or uh, kinesthetic learners. But what really happens with all of this is that children start thinking in terms of relating their understanding to something that they're seeing on screen. It could be that. It could also be being able to connect with others so that their understanding happens better. So for me, that's good learning. So technology is the way to tapping Gardner's multiple Absolutely. intelligences? Absolutely. Fantastic, ma'am. Let's have a look at the next question. Yeah, sure. uh, you know, parents feel that uh, giving tablets and mobile phones in the hands of a teenager or an adolescent student it's like an open invitation to engage them in other distractions like the social media, games. What would be your take on that, ma'am? I think if I'm not interested in something, I'm just not interested, period. 
So how do I make it interesting is what is important. Uh, if we start saying, I'm going to come to a class and I'm going to be teaching you maybe the parliament, I'm not interested. But what if I bring across a happening and bring it like an incident into the classroom and from there as a case study, I take it off and uh, make children relate to that, question them, discuss with them the happening, they get engaged. So I think our responsibility is towards keeping engaged learners, that is very important. How everything has its pluses and minuses, to me social media is just about that. You can use social media for learning, you can also use social media for unlearning. So how do you use something is more important. So to assume that children will always use it for the wrong purposes is wrong. I do not believe in it. I think I have tremendous faith in the ability of children to be able to discern between what is right and what is wrong. But if I as a teacher, I'm not going to engage my student in my classroom, then I'm going to use social media or have other distractions with that. But at the same time, while we give them an instrument, if I think we speak in terms of what we can expect from our children, I think that's wonderful way of uh, telling them what their responsibility is and I'm sure they will rise to the occasion. Terrific. So technology per se is just not for the sake of technology. Absolutely. It should engage the child. Absolutely. Wonderfully said, wonderfully said. There are some, a, a group of experts maybe, who believe that a child may entirely become dependent on technology. For everything he would uh, go to his app or his mobile phone or his tab or his uh, laptop, this in the long run might induce the habit of cheating in children. How would you look at this problem and how would you as the principal and as a leader in innovation and education tackle such a problem? You ended the introduction by saying education is about wings to fly high and roots to be rooted uh, firmly to the ground. That's where values come in. And I think uh, what the answer to this particular question comes from the point of view that if we have a very clear understanding with our children, we won't face the kind of problems that we anticipate to face. Having said that, let me tell you, there will be a kind of uh, over usage, you can, if I can use that word, of technology, be it mobile, be it laptops, be it anything. The mobiles may give way to something as small as your little finger tomorrow. And uh, artificial intelligence is coming, machine learning is in. How do we use technology as a tool to aid our children to think critically and also to innovate is what we have to give our children. I think uh, if we start thinking that children will become dependent, they will going to misuse it, they will bound to be doing just that. But if we tell them that uh, this is what we can and this is what things that we can see around the world, how many ideas do I gather if I just type in one of my ideas? So it's a networking of ideas that I have to use my technology for. And I would like to give an example that just happened 10 minutes before I left my office today. Two students from Standard 10 came to me and they said, ma'am, we need your permission to uh, flag off an album that we have created. So I said, what did you create? So they said, we created a musical album. And I'm very happy. I said, what did you do? So he said, it was for Ganpati that we did. And we did a song on Ganpati, which is sung by four of my classmates. So all four 10 Standard students have done this. The mixing, the editing, the recording, everything has been done by the students. It's on YouTube and uh, they have placed it so well with the kind of marketing that they've had that there's a musical company that has bought this. And they want to launch it and they want me to launch it. And uh, they're looking out for a date which is convenient for me. And I thought how advanced our children have become. I think that's what I would like to look for as a principal. That have my child, children gone 10 steps ahead of me? And I said, how do you do this mixing? I really want to know. I'll come and show it to you. But I have a studio of my own. Can you come across? This is what he said. 
Tell me, ma'am, and I will go together and I'll show you my studio. It's a small room in my own house that I've created. I think that's what technology has done. It has created musicians, it has created innovators, it has created entrepreneurs who at the age of 15, he's just turned 15, he's able to do so much. So what, that's what I think technology can be. And as a student of mine who's in grade 11, has challenged Newton's third law of motion. His paper has been act accepted by the International Journal of Physics. He was invited by the World Congress of Physics at Czechoslovakia in Prague and he made a paper presentation. So he's now in the process of proving that Newton's third law of motion is incorrect. I mean, what greater pleasure th can a teacher get than having these children come out challenging something which has been accepted with a full stop. So if the full stop can become a question mark and then a comma, I think we are going to give rise to a chain of such ideas. What we have, it will be a country of creative thinkers, creative problem solvers, and I think we will land up with a country of a whole lot of Nobel laureates, and I think that's my dream for the country. Terrific. And to share to that statement, ma'am, I'm, I'm, it's, uh, it's really a fantastic feeling to know that there is an 11th standard student who is actually challenging Absolutely. Newton's third law of motion and getting international acclaim for that. That's right. Talking about teachers, ma'am, I think they also love technology. Absolutely. But there is a small lot of teachers who feel that it may be a hindrance to their teaching style and therefore they do not adapt to technology. You being the principal and the head and the director of a reputed institution plus being a teacher trainer, I would really like you to enlighten us on what do you do to tackle such a situation? It is a tough call uh, because sometimes it just happens that I may use my mobiles, I use my laptops for personal purposes, but I don't want to use it for teaching. As simple as that. So I start by talking to them about taking away mundane jobs with the help of technology. Once that happens, I think very soon they start, um, you know, understanding that the world is going ahead. Second, I think students are again a great motivator because students come back saying this and somewhere you start rethinking that if the world is moving in that direction, I have to move ahead. So that's the way teachers have to do it. Some part of it would be a little bit of compulsion because sometimes you have to put your foot down. I think that's uh, the three techniques that I adopt. But for above all, I think what I think an educational leader should do is to stand as an example for the teachers. Wow. So if you don't believe in it, nothing is going to come out of it. So I, I strongly believe that whether I can do, I think I was the first school in the country that started online examinations 12 years back. And uh, at that point of time, it was in its very nasal stage. Uh, I wasn't too sure whether I was right, but I had ideas. I started my own website and the school's website, the first website was created by me. I didn't have much of technical and technological knowledge, but I had my computer teacher who could translate my ideas into what I wanted. As teachers, we are prepared to learn no matter what the age is, because everything age is about your, what is in your mind. I think uh, children start understanding that the children, teachers will come up to it. And let me tell you, my first tutor for HTML and uh, the HTML in those days, I'm talking about 15 years yes, back, yes. was a student from Standard 12. He taught me that. I feel still so proud of Shishir who taught me that and at one point of time he would tell me every Friday I'll test you and one Friday when he tested me and I got it wrong, he said, how can you forget not realizing that I was his vice principal and then he said, oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot and I think that's the beauty of a relationship between a student and teacher. So if a teacher opens her mind to learning, no matter from whom, I think you will have an open mind as an open parachute that will help you to absorb all ideas. I think it's a wonderful suggestion that you've given. The way you spoke about managing the teachers, you know, first of all, making their work easier with the help of technology, and then from there on, introducing it in phases. Terrific. Um, just um, coming back to students, we are uh, noticing 
I mean that the attention span of students is going down. You know, like it's becoming exactly. uh, lesser and lesser as uh, uh, technology is advancing. Now, uh, what do you think? I mean, an honest response to this: Will these students be able to cope with long-term assignments and learning? Um, yes, I do think that attention span is uh, reducing, but I have a little variant to that because I think that if children are interested in a particular thing, the attention span is increasing. Okay, so what have we to do as teachers, what have we to do as educators is to make learning fun. Because ultimately, let's understand children come to school to have fun and meet their friends. And if I can do that, by through the manner in which I teach and the kind of assignments that I give and the kind of activities that I do, then I make their learning meaningful. And if learning is meaningful, they will be able to do long-term assignments. But to create long-term assignments, anything that is mundane is not acceptable to the younger lot. Forget the younger lot, I think you and I too will not like it anymore. We don't like anything to be done over and over again something that we need to repeat a lot of lot many times write pages and pages of something which we don't believe in so i think what we have to do is to change the education system or the assignment system or the assessment patterns in such a way that we have more creative assignments which allows children to crack the metacognitive aspect of it rather than check their memory and if there's any assignment that only test the memory, children will find it absolutely boring. They're not going to do it for us. So let's do long-term assignments, let's do long-term learning. And I believe that long-term learning and long-term assignments have to be clubbed with short-term assignments and uh, you know quicker ways, multiple choice questions in order to help them understand the wide range of assignments and assessments that are possible. Because ultimately, what's the purpose of an assessment or an assignment is to know what they have understood. That's the purpose. It's not for us to assign Correct. marks. Correct. There's a lot of weightage being given to marks that will follow automatically. They don't have to worry. It's a byproduct of your learning. No matter what, it cannot go away from someone. And after a certain point of time, it really doesn't matter whether you got a 95% or 98%. Because for all you know, the person tile may not be very different. So concentrate on what your learning is because that's going to keep us going in the long run. Coming from an educator of your stature, that when you said that, um, well, children come to have fun and if we want them to learn, learning should be fun. Absolutely, I'm sure we also want to have fun. I don't yes. think we want to bore them also, you know. Yes, yes. But uh, so as long as, I mean, and that's why I say that as educators, uh, don't think of it as a job. The day you start seeing it as a job, you're going to deliver lessons and correct assignments. If you start looking at it like a passion or the fact that there's no difference between my home life and my workplace, I think you see everything children as your own children and teachers as your own friends. I love the way you are on the way to innovation with like Rote learning is passé. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, ma'am, from all of us at Robomate. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thanks so much.